So now we're going to start looking at the feel of this chart. What does this chart feel like in theme? Theme is an emotional argument, and even the subject matter carries emotional connotations. Well, the first thing we're going to do is say, at the top of the chart, we talked about the difference between, at the top level, universe, physics, mind, and psychology, and external, universe and physics, or internal, mind and psychology, state of things, universe or mind, or process, activity, physics or psychology. Internal, external, state, process. That's what the chart asks you to first determine in your story for each of the four through lines, for each of those four points of view, to create perspective, to create the domains. Now, we're going to start a little simpler than that, more simple. We're not going to ask you to attach the domains, the points of view right now. We're going to say, let's just look at the chart and see if we can determine what the difference is between an internal problem and an external problem. Internal and external. What is internal? What is external? Let's see some examples, and we'll go from there. That gives you an idea of the difference between internal and external. Internal, it scrooges attitudes, what's going on in this mind that causes the problem. Externally, it's this alien running around killing people that causes the problem. Back to our chart again. I hope you can see that. Oh, static electricity, what a wonderful thing. Yes. Okay, looking back at the chart, we now see that these two are about something going on in the environment. And these two, even if it has environmental repercussions, uh, mind and psychology are about what's happening inside somebody's head. That's what's causing the problem. A way to look at it is to say, although all of these will be affected, if you have a problem in the universe, it'll affect activities, it'll affect attitudes, it'll affect psychology. But where is the stone dropped in the pond? Where is it that the ripples start from dramatically? Is it because of universe, physics, mind, or psychology? Now again, each one will get its own domain, but for now we're just saying let's identify the subject matter. Forget about the point of view. We'll get to perspective later. Right now, let's just look at subject matter. And I think we can pretty well tell the difference between an external kind of problem falling into one of these two areas, like alien, or an internal problem driven by someone's attitude like Scrooge. Well, now let's divide it up a little bit more. We're going to look at, let me get my little chart, my little syllabus here so I can tell what we're going to look at. Oops, static electricity running out, mind willing, flesh weak. Okay, we're going to be looking at universe physics, mind, and psychology. We're going to look at them and say, here are four different stories. Again, movie illustrations. Let's look at one that deals with a fixed situation. Let's get a little more refined than just saying external. We're going to look at a fixed situation story and then an external activity story. State and process external. Then an example of a fixed state of mind and an internal process internal state, internal process. So now we're saying when you're choosing your story's thematic topic, your story's thematic subject matter, rather than just saying, oh, it deals with an external issue like death or something, or it deals with an internal issue like cruelty, now you have to get a little more specific and say, is it dealing with an external state or an external process? Is my story's theme about an internal state or an internal process? Let's look at those four examples. We've looked at universe now on the chart, and we've said a fixed state, that is where they are in the Nakatomi Plaza, which has been taken over by terrorists. Now at the beginning, there's a bunch of activity. The terrorists take it open. That's like Backstory almost. It's as the problem is being created in the story, it requires activity. However, once they have taken over the place, then that's the fixed situation. So in the original Die Hard, they're stuck in a fixed situation. There's hostages, they're in a building that's been taken over by terrorists, and until that situation is resolved, the problem remains. 
How does that differ from physics? How does that differ from an external activity? Let's take a look and find out. Now, I'm not saying that African Queen uh, is a movie that is all about physics. Certainly, we remember it not so much because of the trip down the river in the boat. We remember it because of the relationship between the two principal characters. One of those characters is the main character, and the other one's the obstacle character. Actually, Humphrey Bogart's the main character. He's the one that we are following in his plight, looking at him and saying, will he decide to change his ways or not? That makes him the main character. Not that he's the one considering whether to change or not. They both consider whether to change or not, but it's because we're with him, because the audience is made to identify with him more than it's made to identify with her. The clip we saw, however, is not about their relationship. The clip is a lull in the relationship when we're filling it with action. And it's that action that's taking place, that activity that's going on, the external activity of trying to get down the river in that boat, through the rapids, over the waterfall, that is what's creating the problem in the clip. So, again, don't associate it with the whole story. It's important to recognize that how much emphasis is given to each one of these areas or to each one of the four through lines, main, obstacle, subjective, and objective, that's a function of storytelling. How much time you spend on it, how strong the words you use uh, are that you use to describe it, how emotive you are, how excited you are yourself as an author about a particular area. So, on each one of those four through lines, the emphasis you give it by screen time or number of pages or how excited you are when you write it will change something of how the story feels, whether the story feels like it's more about a relationship or more about the activity. But the activity has got to be there. And in African Queen, you can look at the story and say the activity described by African Queen is about going down a river in a boat and facing all these physical processes that are hazards. Whereas, although you have physical processes in Nakatomi Plaza in Die Hard, it's a fixed situation in which everyone is trapped that has activities going on in it. In African Queen, it's an activity that they are engaged in that encounter a number of situations. Slight difference, but that determines then which one has the emphasis. And in this case, we were looking at the physics aspect of African Queen before we looked at the universe aspect of Die Hard. Now let's take a look at the internals. Hopefully you have an idea now, how to make a choice as to whether you want physics or universe as the uh, subject matter of one of, uh, any of the four through lines that you choose. One is the active form, one is the fixed state. But internally, we'll see the same kind of relationship between the two, a fixed state of mind or a manner of thinking, psychology. Let's look at a couple of clips because here's where a lot of people have trouble. A lot of authors say, well, I know it's what's going on in somebody's head, but look, they have an attitude and they also think. How can I tell what's the problem? Well, a fixed state or attitude is something that doesn't change. It remains the same. That basically describes the individual. All right, so we see that the Grinch's heart was two sizes too small. In other words, he has this fixed attitude. He has an absence of some quality. He is a mind character. That All the problems in the story come from mind. Now, even when he's out considering, what should I do about Christmas? How should I? He's thinking about things, but it never changes his attitude. He changes different methodologies of thinking. He decides to disguise himself. He pretends to be nice and all of these kinds of things as Santa Claus, but in fact, his attitude has not changed. It's only when his attitude changes at the end that we know the Grinch has now resolved the problem in the story. So that's a fixed attitude, just like Scrooge, very much like Scrooge and also a Christmas story. I wonder if there's a coincidence. Let's take a look at somebody whose problem is not their attitude. They've, in fact, their head's in the right place, their heart's in the right place, but they just think about things in a way that screws things up.
Hamlet is a psychology character. He thinks too much. He's got the guy in his sights. He's got the sword. There are no guards. He can come up and avenge his father's death and accomplish everything the ghost asked of him. But when he's about to do it, he says, well, gosh, if I hit him here, strike him down while he's praying, he'll, he'll go to heaven. And if he goes to heaven, then what kind of a vengeance is that? You see, he overthinks the plumbing. Unlike the Grinch or Scrooge, who has a bad attitude that then permeates everything, but they think rather clearly, they're just coming from the wrong place. Hamlet, he's coming from the right place, but he thinks in a muddled fashion, not an appropriate fashion. That's where the problems are coming from there. So now we've seen the complete set of them. Universe, physics, mind, and psychology. Die Hard, African Queen, Grinch, and Hamlet. Each one has a different kind of problem that is paramount in the story. And the reason that they have a different flavor is because they're dealing with different aspects of the periodic table of story elements, the Dramatica structural chart, the Dramatica thematic chart.